In this video, we're going to talk about a few different ways to describe reactions in solution. So uh, there are three main ways that we can describe reactions to, in solution, and they each go to a different level of specificity. So the most general way, um, and the one that you've seen already quite a bit, is called the formula equation. And this is just writing um, the general chemical equation with all aqueous species denoted as aqueous species. So for example, if we have silver nitrate, so we have AgNO3 aqueous plus potassium chloride aqueous, Right, this will react in a precipitation reaction to form a solid silver chloride precipitate and potassium nitrate, which we saw in our first example is just a clear liquid um, in the, that the precipitate will be in. Right, so this guy's aqueous. So this is the formula equation, right? And the only drawback here, it's, it's really general, right? It doesn't really tell you what's going on in solution. We know that all of these are strong electrolytes, and so they would actually be dissociated into hydrated ions in solution. So an extra level of specificity is added uh, in what we call the complete ionic equation. So complete ionic equation. And in this equation, it is the exact same type of equation, but instead of displaying these as, uh, as compounds, they're displayed as their individual hydrated ions. So for example, we will say the same exact uh, reaction, we will just say we have silver, a silver cation that's hydrated in aqueous solution plus a nitrate anion that's in aqueous solution plus a potassium cation in aqueous solution plus a chlorine anion in aqueous solution, right? So all we've, we've done here is to rewrite our reactants where we know these are strong electrolytes that are going to dissolve in solution and become these separate hydrated ions. So we just denote that in the complete ionic equation. And then for the products, uh, we have this uh, silver chloride solid plus hydrated potassium and hydrated nitrate anions. Right. So uh, so what you'll notice here. Right. Um, so this is the complete ionic equation. Everything's written out. If it dissolves in aqueous solution into separate ionic components, we show that. Right. Uh, what you'll notice here is that in the products and the re in the products and the reactants, there are some ions that don't change at all. Right. Uh, in this case, the nitrate uh, anion is the exact same in the products and reactants. Same thing for the potassium cation, exact same in the products and reactants. If something doesn't change from products to reactants, we call these spectator ions. So in this case, the potassium and nitrate um, ions would be spectator ions. And same here, right? So these guys are spectator ions now the last equation that you can that you can write um, that gives you a lot of information or, or probably the most um, succinct information is called the complete ionic uh, not the complete the net ionic equation so our net ionic equation And what the net ionic equation does is it gets rid of these spectators. So the nitrate anion gone, potassium 
gone right because it's it's not doing anything it's not changing throughout the course of the reaction so uh what the net ionic equation does is get rid of all of the spectator ions and the only thing you're left with are the ions that actually form the precipitate or form some uh new product so we will have the silver cations plus the chlorine anions and that's going to give you the silver chloride solid. So the net ionic equation really gives you the most succinct description of what's actually changing in the reaction. So you end up with just the silver ion interacts with the chlorine anion to give you silver chloride solid. So all three of these, these are different ways to describe reactions in solution um, that, that go to a different level of specificity. So the formula equation would be the most general. The complete ionic equation is the most, the one that fits most with what's occurring in reality. And the net ionic equation is like the most succinct version. And this net ionic equation is going to be very useful because this is really all you need to do any type of calculations with, um, with reactions in solution. And so to show that, let's go through an example. So this example problem asks what mass of solid uh, silver bromide is produced when 100 milliliters of a 0.15 molar solution of sodium nit of uh, silver nitrate is added to 20 milliliters of one molar sodium bromide, right? So we basically have to first get a net ionic equation for this guy, right? So First, let's write out the formula equation. We'll write out the full formula equation. We know that the solid uh, silver bromide is gonna be one of the products and that our reactants are silver nitrate and sodium bromide, right? So let's, let's write this out here. So we got silver nitrate, aqueous silver nitrate plus aqueous sodium bromide right? That's going to give you the solid sodium bromide. Now, if you, if you stop here, if this is all that you write, this is not a complete chemical equation, right? We still have some stuff that's left over uh, that we haven't accounted for yet, right? So even though it doesn't tell you that there's another product formed, you have to know that there's another product that's going to be formed here. This solid isn't the only product right? We still have two ions that are left over that are going to form the other aqueous product. So this sodium, uh, this sodium nitrate is going to be the other product, right? In aqueous solution. Okay. That's our formula equation. So if we write out all of our different ions that we have here, right? The complete ionic equation would be silver cation, plus a nitrate anion plus a sodium cation plus a bromine anion that's going to give you again the solid silver bromide it's one of our products plus aqueous sodium ions and aqueous nitrate anions. Okay, so can you spot the spectators? Let's look. So we know that silver bromide is our product, our, our solid product. So, um, so if you look at which ones aren't really participating here, the nitrate uh, anion is not, right? It stays the same, reactants and products. Same thing with the sodium. Um, the sodium uh, cation is also not changing. So our spectator ions are the nitrate and the sodium. Those guys can go away and then we can write our uh, net ionic equation. So it'll just be silver cation interacts with the bromine anion to give you silver bromide. Okay, so we have so we have our complete uh, our net ionic equation here, right? 
So this is all we actually need to answer the problem that we've been given, right? So we, we want to know how much solid silver bromide is produced, right? So what were we given? We were given volumes and we were given a molarity, right? We're given concentrations for each one of these solutions. So that gives us everything we need to solve here, right? The first thing we need to do is figure out how many moles of each of our reaction reactants we actually have here, right? So uh, for milliliters, right? So 100 milliliters is going to be 0 0.1 liters and 20 milliliters is going to be 0 0.02 liters. Now, why am I converting to liters? Keep in mind, if you're using a molarity, molarity is moles per liter. So you want to always convert your volumes from whatever they're in to liters, right? So uh, we want to go from milliliters to liters here. So uh, for our amount of, so we want to figure out how many moles of silver ions and bromine ions we'll have, right? Since we have 0.15 molar of silver uh, silver nitrate, right? That's going to be our same concentration of silver ions. So uh, we start with this volume of silver nitrate that we were given, 0.1 liters, and use that molarity. So we got 0.15 moles for every one liter, right? And specifically, this is moles of silver ions. And so that's going to give us 0 0.015 moles of silver ions. Now for the, um, for the sodium bromide, so we have 0 0.02 liters of sodium bromide. And the molarity that we were given is 1.0. So that's going to be the amount of bromine anions we have, right? So that's per liter. So since this is just one, that just comes down as 0.02 moles of bromine. Okay, so now the question is asking us what mass of sodium of silver bromide is actually produced in this reaction, right? So we have the number of moles of each one of our reactants. So which one do we use? Well, the answer to that question is that we have to figure out which one's gonna run out first, which one is the limiting reactant, right? So, uh, so in this case, since there's a one-to-one -one ratio between silver, uh, the silver ions and the bromine ions, uh, basically we can just inspect these two numbers, right? The sil we have less silver than we do bromine, so that means that we're going to run out of these silver ions first. This guy is going to be our limiting reactant, right? So this guy is going to be limiting. So what does that mean for us? That means that we have to use this number to figure out the mass of the uh, silver bromide that's actually going to be produced, right? So we know we have 0 0.015 moles of silver ions we know it's going to run out it's going to be the limiting reactant so uh, we can use the mole to mole ratio between silver ions and silver bromide which is a one to one ratio for us right so for every one mole of silver ions you're going to produce one mole of silver bromide so that makes the math super easy for us we know we're going to produce just 0 0.015 moles of sodium bromide, right? And again, like when we were doing this, the limiting reactant problems, we know we're not done just yet because it asks us what mass of solid sol uh, silver bromide is produced. So we're going to have to convert from moles to grams. So 0 0.015 moles of silver bromide. The molar mass for silver bromide is 187.77 grams. Oop, I'm putting that in the denominator. 187.77 grams of silver bromide for every one mole of silver bromide. So when you do the math there, you get a final mass of 2.82 grams of silver bromide form. Okay, so uh, so we were able to get this, right? We were able to get this, you know, just from using this, 
this net ionic equation. And it's going to be very useful for you to isolate the net ionic equation so that you can know exactly what is being produced and what's involved uh, in these solution reactions, right? Um, so that's uh, three different ways to describe reactions in solution and an example problem of using that in order to solve a problem.